الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد we praise Allah the exalted and might the majestic and we ask him to exalt the mention grant peace and send his blessings upon the final messenger and the seal of prophets the prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم there are many questions in this life that are unanswered and there are some questions which we can afford to leave unanswered and there are other questions which we cannot afford to leave unanswered there are certain things we which we should know and not knowing them creates a conflict in this worldly life and it will create a bigger conflict in the life to come among the questions which we must have an answer for every single human being regardless of his background ethnicity race nationality or whatever other things that have divided human beings in this day and time and before this is the one thing which each and every one of us must know and that is the purpose of life what is the purpose of life why are we here why am i here why are you watching this is it just for uh, passing time is it for entertainment is it that we go through this life just to experience different feelings and and emotions and so on and so forth and then there's no accountability afterwards it's impossible it's impossible everything in this life of ours proves and alludes to the fact that there's another phase of life where we will be held accountable for what we choose and decide to do in this day and time what we decide to do today you could tell this by uh, other examples that we can see on daily basis you know that's why there's a, a, a judge and there's a court and there are people who are being persecuted and there are people who are being tried and people who are being killed if the killer were to get away with all the crimes then and at what point is he supposed to be held accountable for these crimes is it that he dies and he gets away with it even though he afflicted harm and damage upon hundreds or maybe thousands of human beings ultimately there's a time when people will have to answer for the actions that they do in this, in this life of ours, today, as we speak. The question, then, what is the purpose of life, is the most important. And the answer is provided again and most explicitly in Islam. In Islam, we have verses from the Quran which give us a clear-cut answer which cannot afford uh, misinterpretation or misunderstanding on the part of the one who's reading it. One of them examples is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal insa illa li'abudun. I have not created jinn, which is a form is a cre creatures made of smokeless fire and ins which are humankind except to establish worship. So of Allah. So the human beings and the jinn were created strictly and merely to worship Allah alone. One may think, why is that the case? Why do they have to worship Allah alone? It's not a matter of having as much as it is a matter of uh, logic. That's what God deserves. The greatness of God, the majesty of God, the grace of God, the love of God, the blessings of God, which we experience on daily basis. And what I mean when I say God, I mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator. And that's his name in Arabic. When we, when we see all the favors he has bestowed upon us, then this is the least we can do as means of adoring the one who gave us what we have. It's not a matter of being imposed as much as it is a matter of being dutiful and being faithful and being appreciative. Same way we deal with other people. When someone does you a favor, you find within yourself the need to pay them back to do them a favor at some at, at another occasion as as means of being to even things out you know this is how we deal with others and so how is it that we receive every single thing we have from the creator and then we don't want to give anything back and the amazing thing is when you give people back when someone does you a favor and you do them a favor in return you're actually benefiting them as well they're they're benefiting from that favor of yours which is just a return favor but in the case of the Creator, then he, there's no benefit for Him. He doesn't need us. He doesn't need our worship. It does not increase His dominion. It does not increase His majesty and His authority. It remains the same. 
we are the ones who would actually gain from that. We will gain by going through the test which we were created for so that we may succeed in the life to come because it's all about the life to come. It's all about paradise because there's paradise and there's hell and we need to strive to do the things which will admit us to paradise and protect us from hell. So the purpose of creation then is worship and worship is a very broad term which is applied by different human beings in different ways some of which are valid and acceptable and others are invalid and unacceptable so we would like to focus on what is intended by worship what is intended by worship is singling out Allah in worship well because someone may worship an object that is not worthy of being worshipped or someone may worship in a manner which is not prescribed or legislated and that will be of no value that's like someone going to school and, and, and enrolling in a school uh, or I'm sorry, in, in attending the classes, however, the person never registered. So when the time of the exam comes and the, the teacher is distributing the papers as per the names of the students, and this person will stand up and say, where's my exam? They say, who are you? Well, I've been attending the class, you know, on a daily basis for, for since the beginning of the semester. Say, well, that's awesome, but we don't have any paperwork that proves that you ever enrolled. As far as we're concerned, you don't exist. So lacking the foundation, will make the person miss out on, on the benefit even though they had attended the class. You understand what I'm saying? So in the same light, in the same manner, we have to understand if the foundation is, is missing, if that worship is not for the one who's worthy of being worshipped, then that worship will be of no basis, of no value, of no benefit because the foundation didn't exist. The sound, correct foundation did not exist. Therefore we say, Tawheed, you hear, you hear this term often or you should hear it often, which really means the oneness and uniqueness of the Creator. We believe in the oneness and uniqueness of the Creator. It's important to understand both terms. Oneness in a sense that is one, is not three in one or two in one or many gods, thousands of God manifesting in one or incarnated into one. No, no. It's one God. There's no equal, there's no second, there's no third. One true God. And unique, there isn't anything like him. Now, in, in amongst the creation, we compare. Say, yeah, that thing is like that. That animal is like that animal. Or this animal is like that animal. Uh, a tiger is maybe close to a lion. They have some things in common. They have some things which differentiate them. You know, but you don't compare a lion to a chair. So there are things which are comparable. But in general, the creation, they're, they're comparable unto each other. The creator, the one who brought everything into existence, is not comparable to his creation. That makes him unique. Because you can have one phone, and I can have one phone, and someone else can have a, another phone. So we can all say we have one phone, but if our phones are the same, identical, they're not unique. If I say I have a unique phone, meaning I have a phone which no one else has. It has something that distinguishes it from the rest of the phones. So when we say the unique God, meaning he is unlike any other God, uh, that the people have made a God, because he's the only one and true God. So then we say that our lives should be revolving around identifying and, and knowing and loving and worshiping this one and unique God. Where to go? How to get to know him? Simple. It has been revealed in the preserved final revelation, the Quran. If you really want to know who your creator is, whom you will meet one day on the day of judgment. You shall meet him. If you want to be prepared for that appointment, if you want to be prepared for that moment, then it begins now. Read the Quran. Read the Quran with an open heart and an open mind, with submission and sincerity, seeking guidance therein. Read the Quran and you will get to know who your Lord is and you will get to love your Lord and you will get to be obedient and subservient and and in and, and, and the best state you could ever dream to be in. That's the only time you'll find a peace of mind. It's the only time you'll find tranquility. It's the only time you will feel that you are on a path which will grant you success in this life and it will grant you success in the life to come. So I invite myself and you to this very valuable, uh, profound truth and reality. The one of knowing the one. The one of knowing the one, 
one and unique and the Quran is is that preserved revelation which facilitates your research you don't have to go looking far it has been brought to you and preserved for your benefit all human being so make sure that you don't live this life and miss out on the most important thing and the reason why you were created to begin with ask God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to facilitate this for all of us and to make us among his righteous servants and all praises due to Allah may Allah exalt the mention and grant peace to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh